Now, high tidal waves have compelled residents of Jita, Fuvama, Anyangwing, and some parts of Kulbobo uh, to flee their homes. And the tides have destroyed most of property, including the only school classroom block in the community. Join news correspondent Ivy Setoji, who will be joining us online. And uh, a very good morning to you. Now, particularly for many of the communities uh, you're mentioning in, in this very report, uh, how devastating uh, is the situation? Hello. Good morning to you. How devastating is the situation as you, you're reporting from uh, the Volta region? Okay, and that's the difference between the staff. You know, we've done this story uh, this year alone about two or three times. Uh, we now the situation is really really sad because most of the houses, hundreds of houses, are just submitted to the water, and residents are now homeless. Uh, they are now saying with residents uh, in either Miami or um, Ita uh, for, 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 for their safety. Right now, their houses are, are destroyed totally. Let's say for Kobo, for example, the town is almost gone. A step of that town built by a white man in, in, in that particular area. Now, Kobama is also almost gone. The only classroom block in that area is almost gone, almost submerged into the into the water. Now students are on vacation though. But the problem is the minor get access to education in that area unless they cross the river to Anyami or Chita. This residents are falling on judgment for an immediate relocation and also a city defense for because right now according to them they don't know what to do. According to them they Government officials normally come there to, to see what the problem, to access the extent of the problem. But when they go, that is the end of it. But now they want government to do something ethic, not formative. They want the real thing. They want government to come to their aid. Because right now the situation is really, really, it, it, it's really, really bad. Mm. Uh, have we had uh, NADMO and perhaps even the Metropolitan or District Assembly in that community really come to their aid? Well, after the time uh, I was there, after the time uh, I was there, no one, none of them came, except the MP for the area, who also visited the area uh, to after the extent of damage. Uh, apart from that, the NASMO is yet to go to the community. I understand they, they will go to the community this morning, so we are hoping that they, they, they do something about this situation. Well, thank you very much. Ivy Satoji is our correspondent for the Volta region. And now let's go uh, to the northern sector of the country where two skeins embroiled in deadly violence which resulted in debt, destruction of property and store development for a decade have finally resolved to live in peace. The two parties in the conflict over who qualified to sit on the throne, the Jamon and Jafop held a customary ceremony on Sunday to officially end the deadly violence in the area. Both parties agreed to end the hostilities following the airing of Joy News' documentary, Brothers at War, which depicted the cost of the conflict to the people. The ceremony, known as the Black Burial, involved the killing of cows, goats, sheep and fowls, meant to cleanse the land. Bunkurugu became a no-go area following bloody clashes there. Controversy over who qualifies to occupy the Bunkurugu skin left many dead and properties running into millions of cities destroyed. Teachers and health workers there fled the area for the sake of their lives. Some residents also moved to Togo as refugees. But today, all these came to an end. The Jamong and the Jafok gates say they are tired of the conflict and will not fight again. A ceremony called the blood burial to cement this vow was held today with the killing of animals to pacify the land. With this blood burial, it is believed that anyone who will attempt to foment any troubles there will be killed by the gods. The leaders of the Jamong and the Jafok gates told the gathering nothing will mar the peace again. I hope everything will move on well and they will be unity. Every single human being who refused from German family or German family or any, any gate or any 
person who comes from the blue line cause a single mistake, I think they, 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 they will face consequences. As we are sitting today, everybody is very, very happy. We cannot even, we cannot even imagine or manage to tell you the kind of happiness we have. Bunkurugu is now a cleansed land. Well, still in the northern part of the country, after about two years of delay, the Upper West Regional Hospital project is set to be completed in September 2016, barring further hitches. The $61 million project, financed by Eurogets, was scheduled to be completed back in 2014. Engineers at the site told journalists after a tour of the facility that the project was 75% complete. There's more in this report found by our Upper West co correspondent, Rafik Salam. Construction work on the 160-bed Upper West Regional Hospital project, whose land was acquired in 2008, kick-started in 2010. It is sited on a 131,000-square-meter land. The $61 million project, financed by Eurojet, will cater for construction works, provision of medical equipment and furniture. The project was scheduled to be completed in 2014, but owing to some challenges, construction works at the hospital delayed. The facility has an administrative block, pharmacy unit, outpatient unit, inpatient unit, physiotherapy apartment, and laboratory. Other apartments are the blood bank unit, surgical section, bands division, emergency care unit, delivery section, and maternity unit. It also has a maintenance unit, stores, power station, medical waste unit, laundry and kitchen component, mortuary, water plant, sewage plant, and a mini market section among others. Briefing media men after a tour of the site, the project site engineer Abu Shama disclosed that the project was 75% completed and likely to be finished in October if there is no hitch. This is uh, working according to our plan. He is, it's working with uh, good progress. Uh, we achieved uh, our plan already and the opening will be by October this year. The challenge is we bought a plan to solve any challenge before happening. That's a good plan and that's what we do. So for now, uh, any challenge meet us, we solve it immediately to achieve our plan. So uh, I confirm that we, until now we don't have any problems. Yeah. The percentage according to our plan is 75% until now. Yeah. Administrative manager of Eurojet, Baba Anaba, call for the depolicization of the project and urge Ghanaians to see the project as their baby. What the government and Eurojet have been able to achieve, we should be able to applaud both of them and not to be looking at the negative side. This project is not for NDC or NPP or CPP or whatever. This project is for all Ghanaians, and we should not try to politicize, politicize it. It has been in the media, media that there's nothing happening. The place is bushy. You can see for yourself what is happening here. Is it bushy? I think you'll be in the best position to tell Ghanaians what you have seen here, the progress of work that is going on here. And by the grace of God, of come October, the president will be here to commission this hospital. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wow. Well, in a very much related sector, here all the Ghana Health Services, it is worried about the continued drop in the number of nursing mothers giving their babies breast milk ex exclusively in the first six months of birth. The number of women practicing exclusive breastfeeding has dropped from six out of every 10 mothers in 2008 to four, according to recent Ghana Health Service figures. The service is now increasing advocacy in the new infant and young child feeding project to reverse the trend. Justice Beidou has been to the Volta region to find out how mothers are receiving the call for change. Oh, why one, one, one? I'm going back home. You this is just a game 
known locally as Ludu. But in Hlefe, a small Volta regional town, this game is what young people are using to drive home the message of good practices of child health, including exclusive breastfeeding. The number of women practicing exclusive breastfeeding has now dropped from 63% in 2008 to 46% in 2011 due in part to such negative perceptions. The exclusive breastfeeding they're supposed to do for six months. Um, we still believe that everybody needs water, especially in an environment with the um, high temperatures. Um, they believe that water should be given but indeed breast milk contains enough water and nutrients that the child needs for the first six months of life for optimum growth it is such backward cultural beliefs that stifles child health that the ghana health service is now seeking to change 28-year-old Keve Emilia is one of the community health nurses trained to counsel new mothers on activities like exclusive breastfeeding under the new infant and young child feeding program, an initiative by the Ghana Health Service. For the women, I follow them from pregnancy. When they deliver, I follow them, teaching them the exclusive breastfeeding when they are six months. Uh, we, we bring in the, this thing, the foster diets. Then when the mother is able to practice all these things, up to two years, I get the mother as a model mother to teach other mothers. Then with the support groups too, we come together to prepare winning meals. We bring small meals, I bring small beans, we join it together, we prepare winning meals. So those that cannot meet the foster diets, with that, they can be able to get foster diets in the house. I believe it is a good thing. That is why they are telling us to do it for our children to stay healthy. I have seen the difference between breastfeeding and not breastfeeding your child. So I've told my sisters to change and also start breastfeeding. A lot of work remains undone, but the result from the intervention so far in the Volta region at least shows a communal spirit could greatly help any public health initiative succeed. For Joy News, my name is Justice Beidou, Hlefe. Yeah, in the Greater Accra region, residents at New Sebrepo in the Kwonkatamansu district, uh, they can now have a sigh of relief for improved security following the commissioning of a police post for the area. The residents who have been terrorized by armed robbers over the, the last couple of years say the presence of police will help end attacks on them. Here's a report from Kwame Yanka. The Member of Parliament for Afajato South, Joseph Amenewode, initiated the establishment of the station with support from the Greater Accra Regional Minister and MP for the area, Nilaye Afote Agbo, the Tema Regional Police Command, and the Pung Katamansu District Assembly. Joseph Amenewode, who happens to be a resident of the area, has been attacked six times by armed robbers. The Tema Regional Police Commander, DCOP Buedu Pepra, assured residents of maximum protection as they bring policing to the doorstep of the people. Men and women of the police service are determined to provide protection to members of the community. Law-abiding citizens will feel very safe in this community. Policing is a shared responsibility and community members are expected to be vigilant and report any suspicious individual to police, providing the police with information on enhanced security in the area. Police will work hard before, during, and after the elections. We cannot afford to fail the service and the nation at large. I urge you all to uphold a high level of discipline and professionalism when we are called to duty. President of the new Sebrepo Landlords and Residents Association, Vivian Adobempon, recalled in an interview that insecurity in the area led to the death of a Dutch national. 
She said the incident created some misunderstanding between the Dutch and the Ghanaian government. Because, uh, arm robbery issues. If I recall, I think we had this uh, this Dutch the girl that was killed in the community. We had serious issues with the Dutch government and the Ghana government as well. And I think uh, after we decided to mobilize ourselves and organize ourselves and make sure things will move on well, hence the police station. So we trust that uh, from here we'll be fine. But I think when we started announcing the situation of the police station in the area, everything started coming down and they were kind of scared and afraid and they were not ready to attack. Meanwhile, MP for the area, Nilaye Afote Agbo, who donated two motorbikes to the police, is urging residents to provide necessary information to aid the police in the dispensation of their duty. Ghana is our own. This is where we find ourselves. And it's not in the hands of only the police. The civilians also have a role to play. So why not? They should come out and then let the police know what is happening. When they see somebody with a funny character or some funny movement within their areas, where they live for their comfort, they shouldn't keep their mouth shut. They shouldn't have any fear. They should come out and tell. Uh, yes, this is what we have seen. Now we have even mobile phones. Those days there was some mobile phone, but communication was going, and people were able were able to do a very good job, you know, in terms of security. So why not? Mm -hmm. Oh, we wish the residents of New Sabripo well. But let's go to the central region and the capital, Cape Coast. And there's a church there, uh, a Catholic church, Apeido, uh, which has banned wearing of provocative dresses by its members. The church has placed pictures of appropriate and inappropriate attire at the frontage of the auditorium as a check to members. The president of uh, the church told our colleague Richard Kojonyako such dresses expose vital parts of the body, especially women, which tends to tempt some weak members and even some priests. <laughs> The Eucharist was powerful, and the entire celebration of the Mass worth remembering. Then came the time for the announcement. The president of the St. John the Baptist Catholic Church at Pedro in Cape Coast, Andrew Kofi Officer, brought out a set of pictures beautifully framed. He showed them to the congregation. There were pictures of what style of dress ladies should wear to church and what they shouldn't wear. The announcement was greeted with a thunderous applause from the congregation, indicating an acceptance of the decision from the church council. So what really propelled the church to do this? Andrew Kufiwafaso explains. The announcement purposely is for dressing code to church. We realize most of our community, especially the ladies, dresses that they wear to expose their parts. For example, their breasts, their back, their thighs. Some of them were extend even after when they sit down, excuse me to say, you can see their panties. And others put on when they're sitting down, and you realize that the breast is coming out. So we started, we decided to give them this education. Gradually, it's not just to enforce them. We are just saying, starting from the church. That's why we told them. Mm. And so that's the situation in the Catholic uh, Church at Peidu, Cape Coast, the central regional capital. We know that it's um, captured the imagination of many news editors over the last 24 hours. Uh, so not surprises on the front pages as well. And that'll be it for the news this morning. All right, there's more when we come <laughs> back. Uh, is this appropriate for church? I think so. Yeah. It's okay. It's a bit tighter showing is more it? of your... Tem really? Tempting me. Really? So what I, is, what, are, you, are you a wiki vessel? What is what, what, what is this? <laughs> what, what is this? But in the meantime, you know, talking about the front pages, etc. Uh, when we come back from the break, we'll be looking at what stories there are, and then we'll also look at uh, some stories on on some news portals. <laughs> Thank you.